Well, here we have another rather different Mamba story. These are true tales of my African adventures. May this inspire you, deter you, caution you, and above all, entertain you. Well, there was a place right in the north of the country on the Limpopo River, the border between South Africa and Zimbabwe. This is a mighty river. When it flows, it's a, quite a sight. When it's dry, in the dry season, it is very often a big, massive, gigantic sand bed, which I've slept in many times. Uh, many creatures come there and you see their tracks across the full extent of the riverbed and there are all sorts of creatures and when you sleep there at night of course you're just sleeping on the sand when you wake up in the morning you will find tracks of a number of different animals that have walked right up to you to look to see who you are and what the strange smell is very interesting i never got harmed by any of them anyway uh, we went to this particular location uh, along the limpopo river because the mambas there very often were huge, over 10 feet, and they were a beautiful olive brown color, not the usual gray or dark gunmetal color, but a beautiful olive brown, and they were very heavy bodied, very thick, and we loved these mambas. So um, we went to catch whatever we could, uh, I think it was a 10-day excursion, and uh, a most extraordinary thing happened. On one day. We were going along the dense bush. It's very dense along the Limpopo River. Uh, in amongst the fever trees, uh, Mapani trees and a host of other trees. And there are these tangled roots which just erupt out of the edge of the bank from the floods that have washed the soil away. And in these are squirrels and birds nesting and a host of other creatures. And the mambas hunt there. And they go down to drink at the water's edge. And as we were proceeding, there lying across the path was a huge, big, black mamba, brown in color, just looking at us. I thought, that's odd. By now, he should have started uh, going at speed to get away from us. But it was just lying there looking at us. I was dumbfounded. Anyway, I kept walking towards it to see what tolerance it had for our presence. And when I got quite close, it moved not too fast to the edge and then slipped off. And actually it fell all the way down into the reeds and swampy verge of the Limpopo River. I then ran to the edge to look to see where it had landed. And guess what? Uh, a piece of the bank broke away and I went down. And I didn't, I thought I'd landed on top of the mamba, which to me is, it's a serious thing. Don't forget, as I keep saying, if you get bitten by a mamba in a remote area, it's equivalent to a death sentence. And in those days, especially, the population was sparse. There was a, there weren't that many clinics or hospitals around. Transportation was slow and inefficient. So one had to be careful. Of course, you never uh, put into your plans a piece of the embankment breaking away and falling on top of your quarry. So there I was now face down in the mud, in the reeds, thinking I'm on top of the mamba. And I was so full of scratches and bleeding here and there from just walking through the thorn scrub that you couldn't tell if you'd been bitten or not, because initially when a mamba bites you, uh, you don't really feel anything. So I lifted my head, peered around, and there I saw the mamba very close to me. I'd missed it, not by a huge margin, I must tell you. Um, and it started to move off. My hook stick, which I was intending to use to retrieve the mamba, was now gone. I don't know where it was. So I shouted above to uh, the party at the top to use their panga, which is like a machete, to cut a stout branch for me to pin down the mamba. In the meantime, I grabbed it by the tail and was ready to dive off into the edge of the river in case it took a strike at me. Actually, I didn't want to be in the water either because there are lots of crocodiles there and I, I didn't know if there was a crocodile in this particular pool I was standing next to. So they threw the stick down 
But in the meantime, I thought, this is really strange. The mamba's actually just lying there, even though I've got it by the tail. And it's not reacting, not trying, not struggling to get away, just with its head turned around, turned around looking at me. I must tell you, when mambas, when you grab them by the tail for the first time in the bush and they turn their head around and look at you, usually they then come at you at speed and you have to dodge the strike. Because if you don't, you know what happens. So I took the stick and I gently rolled it onto its neck and pushed the head down, went forward gently and picked it up behind the head with the hand which I was using previously to hold the body and it was not trying to get away. I just could not understand it. Picked it up, uh, got out, went along the embankment, got onto the top, put it in a bag and we took it back to our camp and at the end of our trip it went back with us. And you won't believe it, the following day when it was introduced into its enclosure, it just went and curled up on the warm spot provided for it. The following day it ate a good big meal, which very often the snakes don't eat so soon after capture, and then went and lay on its warm spot again, drank some water, and didn't react to our presence at all. It was actually just a benign mamba with a fabulous nature. I'd never yet known that there was such a thing as a mamba that just wasn't interested in you, regardless of what you said or did or how you behaved. It was just a very kind, beautiful natured, wonderful uh, snakes, the likes of which I had not yet met.